plants are mostly water, and as well as being essential to their survival, water is also the means by which nutrients are drawn up from the soil through roots and stems into leaves and fruit. So good irrigation is a high priority for any garden. The first thing to consider when planning irrigation is that traditional watering methods are inefficient. Watering your garden from above during the heat of a summer's day wastes water and rarely helps the plants. Often, only the first inch or so of soil is dampened and water that falls on leaves quickly evaporates, never reaching the roots. Water on leaves also makes plants more susceptible to diseases spread through spores in the air, such as blights, so you should always water the base of a plant, not its leaves. To reduce evaporation, add dry mulch on top of the soil, such as a thin layer of dried grass clippings, comfrey leaves, hay or wood chip. Water can seep through this layer, but it then doesn't evaporate quickly and the soil below is kept moist. For big plants, such as tomatoes, burying a plastic bottle with a few small holes punched in the bottom can provide an extra water reservoir. Screw the cap on the top and water will slowly percolate out into the surrounding soil, providing a consistent water source. Combine this with guttering and water barrels and you can end up with an eco-friendly solution that stores excess water during wet weather that you can use efficiently during dry periods. What if you are away from your garden for extended periods and don't have someone to water your plants? That's where drip irrigation can come in handy. Automating the watering with a timer and delivering water exactly where it's needed is an efficient way to irrigate crops. You can use our garden planner to plan drip irrigation by selecting the irrigation layer from the toolbar. This makes it easy to work out just what you require before you start installing it. Most drip irrigation systems start with three things at the water source. First, a timer controls when the watering should happen. Typically this will be 10 to 15 minutes in the morning and or the evening. Second, it's a good idea to include a water filter to eliminate particles that can clog the drip irrigation system. Third, add a pressure regulator to prevent the water pressure from exceeding what a drip irrigation system can handle. Typically this will be around 10 to 30 psi for a small garden. Next, the supply lines for the water need to be laid out. Half inch polyethylene supply tubing is usually used for this as it's easily attached to walls, cable tied to pipes or buried under pathways. It's important to identify any sharp bends as this could restrict water flow if the tube kinks. You can use 90 degree elbow fittings to make sharp turns and prevent kinks in the supply line. T fittings can be used to create a branch line off the main supply line. Finish each length with an end fitting. Once the supply tubing is in, it's time to add the drip line. This is connected by punching a hole in the half inch supply tubing. A length of quarter inch tubing is attached to one end of a transfer barb and the other end of the barb is inserted into the hole. The quarter inch supply tubing is run to the area to be watered, then another transfer barb is used to connect the drip line to the quarter inch supply tubing. Several different patterns are commonly used for laying out the tubing. For plants in rows, quarter inch drip line is run along the beds, kept in place by U-shaped hold downs every three feet or so. For more densely grouped plants, you might choose to snake the drip line along the bed. In the garden planner, you can draw this by holding down the control key on a PC or the command key on a Mac to add lines for each quarter turn without needing to pick up the drip line tool every time. Then, curve them using the middle handles. For square or circular beds, a spiral layout can work well. Containers on a patio or deck can also have lines branch out to them. In each case, the rule of thumb is that quarter inch drip line can only feed around 15 to 20 feet, depending on the emitter spacing. So if you need to go further than that, you'll need to run another length of quarter inch supply tubing instead. Larger bushes and trees will often have their own supply line and use either half inch emitter tubing or if they're irregularly spaced you can use half inch supply tubing with emitters inserted into it at the right places. Circle the tree so that the roots are encouraged to grow out rather than stay in a tight root ball. It's fine to put a layer of mulch over the drip line just so long as it doesn't become buried into the soil which can cause back suction of dirt potentially clogging the system. 
These simple design principles work well for small to medium gardens with an equivalent of up to about 6, 4 to 8 foot beds. For larger gardens you'll need to divide them into separate systems, often referred to as zones, where you run more than one supply line and may use more than one timer. When your design is complete, just head to the Parts List button where the garden planner has calculated the number and length of parts required. Add around 10% to the totals for any length of tubing to make sure you have a little spare when installing it. With your plan and parts list, you'll find it much easier to put in place a reliable system to ensure that your plants get the regular watering they need.